Hello, and welcome back to GM Construct for episode 12 of WireMod Essentials. In this installment, we explore the abilities of the WireMod light and different effects that you can pull off. Now, before we begin, let me explain how wire lights work. They accept three values X, Y, and Z. These values represent red, green, and blue, respectively. For example, if you put 255 in every position, each color is outputting at its full potential, and the light shines a bright white. This works with any combination of values between 0 and 255, so you literally have the entire rainbow to explore. Before we move on to the fancy effects like coggling between colors or making a light flash, we're simply going to learn how to control one. First thing you're going to need is a toggled button, with 255 for the on value and 0 for off. This will send either 0 or 255 to one of the slots in the color vector, turning on or turning off that color. I'm going to wire red from the light to the button, turn the button on, and send 255 to the red slot of the color. The vector is now 255, 0, 0. This outputs as bright red. Now I'm going to remove 255 from the red slot of the vector and move it to green by wiring green to the button instead of red. This makes the vector 0, 255, 0. The same works with blue, putting 255 in the last slot to make the light shine a bright blue. This also works combining colors, as I demonstrated in the explanation earlier. The two colors shining now are red and blue, which makes purple. And when I fill in the last section, to make all the values 255, we see a bright white. All in all, lighting effects aren't that difficult. You just need to think about where you're putting your values and how you're controlling them. In this case, we're going to place our button as a toggled 0, 1. Just to overwrite the old one is fine. The next thing we're going to need is a gate under the time section called a square pulse. It has an input called run, and if the input of run is greater than 0, then it toggles between two values automatically for a set increment of time. Let's place this here. And the next thing we're going to need is a constant value to set the parameters for our square pulse. In this case, we're going to have 255 for the on value, 0 for the off value, and 1 for the for this pulse times. So, a constant value of 255, 1, and 0 would be perfectly fine. Make sure all the drop down boxes are set to number. Once we have those filled in correctly, let's go ahead and place it right next to the square pulse for convenience. A square pulse is basically a bunch of parameters within a chip. First thing we're going to wire is run. That's going to go to the button so that it activates while the button is toggled to on. Next thing we're going to wire is pulse time. This is the time that it, that it sends the on value in seconds. Similarly, we're going to wire gap time to one second. So it stays on and stays off for one second. Off value will be wired to zero. And similarly, on value will be wired to 255, so that it toggles between these two values automatically. If everything was done correctly, and the button is pressed, the square pulse will switch between 255. And there you go. Every second, it switches from 255 to 0, or 0 to 255. Now all you need to do is wire, is wire a color from the light to the square pulse. In this case, I'm going to choose red. And there you go. Evenly flashing light. And all it took was a gate, a value, and a button. Alternating flash means that we're going to take what we just learned like the two separate lights, making it so that one is on while the other's off. Sort of like a police bar. First thing we're going to need is a gate logic knot. Place that next to the square pulse like I just did. And then, after that, we're going to need a gate arithmetic multiply. Alright, now that we have that placed, let's start wiring. Yeah, it's that simple. Okay, first thing we're going to need to wire is the knot gate. You're going to wire that to the square pulse. And once you're finished with that, wire A from the multiply to the NOT gate, and then B from the multiply to the constant value of 255. 
for the most part, we're done. The only thing we need to do is wire up the light. We already have the red light wired to the square pulse, which is turning off and on as the button is pressed. In addition to that, we'll need to wire up the second light to the NOT gate, so that it turns on while the other is off. I'm going to wire blue for this one to make it look like a police bar. And there you have it. Combining what we learned, we have a fully functioning police light bar. We started out with both lights off, but when we pressed the button, our lights started alternating. That's because as the square pulse outputs 0, the NOT gate becomes 1, and 1 is multiplied by 255, which is sent to the blue light, and they alternate this way. Toggling between two colors is just as simple, except we take out the square pulse with the remover gun and replace its function with the button, basically manualizing what we were doing automatically. Now all we need to do is switch the button back to a toggled 0 to 255. This is simple enough, just overwrite the one that you already have placed. And as you can see, we have the NOT gate and the multiply gate left over from our last effect. We're going to be using these the same way that we used them in the last tutorial. Simply wire A from the NOT gate to the button, and as the button outputs 0, the NOT gate outputs 1 which is multiplied by 255 and sent to the other color. To set this up so that the light is displaying as red while the button is off, we're going to wire red from the light to the multiply gate. Inversely, so that the light turns green while the button is on, wire green from that same light to the button. And what's happening is as the button turns on, the NOT gate becomes zero and 0 multiplied by 255 sends 0 to the red section of the vector, and green is left alone. The same principle applies while the button is off, sending 255 to red and 0 to green, as demonstrated. To close, we're going to do something a little more fun. We're going to put three gate arithmetic randoms into the field, which will put three random values into the red, green, and blue inputs of the light. This will display, for every millisecond, a different random color, which will give us the effect of a so-called rave light. For this endeavor, no other gate acquired. I simply need to wire A from each of the random gates to the button. And as the button outputs 255 for its on value, it will select a value between 0 and 255 and a value between 0 and 0 while the light is off, effectively shutting off the lights. The last step, of course, is to configure the color vector. Each random gate represents X, Y, or Z. The first one is going to be red. So let's go ahead and wire it that way. Red from the light is going to go to the first random gate. And then green is going to go to the second, to fill in the second color vector component. And finally, to finish it out, we're going to wire blue to the last random gate. And turning it on, we get something like this. Oh yeah! I hope you guys have as much fun playing around with this as I did making it. So as always, thanks for watching, and I hope this helped.